top of the morning to you. Excuse me. Oh, the old nest here. It rained up a, it rained like three or four times last night. It rained at three in the morning. And then again at five or six, just a couple times. Bring that to him. You don't think it rained a ton. <clears throat> that, uh, that was sitting out on the table last night. We're under a tree, too, so. There you go. Must have been an inch of standing water in there. Pretty quiet out here this morning. Neighbors are all safely tucked in their little beds. It gives me time to come out and tinker on my stuff. Which is okie dokie in my work. I'm gonna stay there. Place is just soft and wet. Luckily, I put most of my stuff away last, last yesterday and last night. We're still water dripping out of the trees and it's, it's been a couple hours ago. Actually one of the things I was going to do this morning was uh, I was going to sit out here and mind my own business and listen to the shortwave radio. This is one of many. Shortwave radios are kind of like flashlights. You can never have enough. And this one I really kind of, I got it pretty inexpensively. Although nowadays, so. shortwave radio is kind of a dying fad with the internet. It's been doing that for some time, I think, but there's kind of a little resurgence, I think. I don't know, it's kind of interesting. Um, the neighborhood, young people are very fascinated by it. They're always amazed, you know, what you can listen to or hear. So I'm not sure why it's, uh, un well, it's not popular. Um, you can probably get a good receiver for, uh, I'd say, probably 100, 150 bucks, a new one. I would really strongly avoid anything that was $39.95. You're not going to be happy with it. I got a feeling that those um, <laughs> cheapy receivers have killed more potential uh, or discouraged more potential shortwave listeners than anything in the world. Um, it's still, it's, it's sunny out and it's still dripping water. That's okay. It won't hurt anything. There are a lot of good, um, especially some older, there are a lot of good older shortwave radios. There are probably a lot of good old shortwave radios cluttering up closets and basements. Um, well, to be real very honest with you, I very seldom see them at uh, estate sales or garage sales. Um, Usually, there, if I see one, it's a wreck. It's just destroyed, and it's unless it's really cheap, it's almost not even worth fiddling with. Um, some of them are so badly damaged that they're unrepairable, almost. Which is, I'll be honest with you, it has to be pretty badly damaged in my book. Um, man, it just really poured last night. If you're gonna if you're gonna get one, there's kind of three, probably three or four categories. Um, 
first off, I would find a find a friend. Uh, you probably know somebody that has one or two or more, um, and they might lend one to you. You know, if they're a good friend. Um, or you know, you might um, something you might try is you might contact a local amateur radio club. Um, those those folks. Um, in addition to doing the amateur radio thing, um, some of the some of them, probably uh, older ham radios, but not necessarily, um, like to listen to shortwave radio, and they might have a receiver you could come over and listen to, or fiddle around with, or they might even let you borrow the thing. So uh, those are some avenues you could try um, before you go out and spend a lot of your hard-earned cash on a radio. If you're gonna buy a used one, I would check it over thoroughly, and uh, you know it's kind of like buying a car. I, you might even want to take it somewhere and have a friend or acquaintance or somebody that's familiar with their operation check it over. If you're new to shortwave radio listening, um, this one is a CC radio. There's there's a lot of them. There's actually, and to be real honest, there's a kind of a flood of cheap Chinese uh, shortwave radios, and some of them are. I'm gonna be mean if you're Chinese, baby, or if you made these radios, um, they're just junk. They're uh, they're just wastes of money. Um, I don't know. It's kind of sad. Um, actually, a good book was the Passport to World Band Radio, and unfortunately, um, in I don't know 2010, I believe, or 2009. This might be the last one. They quit producing this this book. It was a fine piece of uh, of uh, I don't know booked them. How's that sound? Uh, half of it had reviews on uh, radios. They had uh, some kind of history, They're, some advertising. Um, they went from you know there's some pretty expensive units in here. Two little portable ones, and they rated them. Um, you know, here's one that's rated a star and an eight. I think five stars was his most. Yeah, five stars was as much as uh, one uh, could get. Um, there's a little bit of goodie. I think they still make those ten tech. Used to make the what they call the 1258, and it was a little. Uh, I don't know if you can see that or not, it's a little shortwave radio. It's a kit, and I think it was a couple hundred bucks. And I think it's one of the last kits available is the shortwave radio. Um, there's a number of uh, different ones. There's some computer-controlled ones. There were some. Uh, I don't know. There were tabletop ones. And the other half of the book is kind of uh, geared up for you know where you want to if you want to hear music or whatever uh, information from radio from Vietnam it would tell you. There was also kind of a by the frequency and time charts in the back. You know even though this is a book that's out of print, you know see I bought this one at Borders. It was twenty two ninety five. Yeah, I remember this. I bought that at Borders and uh, they acted like they did me a big favor by ordering it. I went trotting down there and expected it to be on the shelf, and the guy that, yeah, it was a gentleman, he helped me. He looked at me like I was nuts. Well, no one listens to short radio, why would we have one of those on the shelf? I said, well, at the time, that was probably the most popular shortwave radio reference book in the world. Um, I believe there's still one, one being produced, and I can't remember the name, I think it was the, the Wrath, or Wrath. It was W A T H or W A T H W A R T H. I don't remember right off the bat. Um, I didn't like its format as well, but I think it's still being produced. Um, there's some good references on the internet, um, but uh, I don't know. The batteries never run down on your book. Anyway, uh, I remember ordering that from Borders. I had to order it, and it was like a big darn burden. And the best part was, is they had to. Uh, put their price tag on it before I got a hold of it. And I guess it could be easily peeled off. And, and it charged me full price, $22.95. That's fine. 
Um, there's kind of three or four categories of radios. There's a portables, which are very small, and in my opinion, kind of junky. Um, it's really hard to pack a good receiver in a tiny space. There are little tabletop uh, models like this one here, which uh, can be very good. Some of them have displays, digital displays, some of them analog ones. There are big tabletop models which are, uh, aren't portable at all. This one, in addition to being able to run on a, uh, a power pack, um, has actually two sets of batteries. It has a, uh, it's kind of clever actually, it has a, uh, a big D cell set and then a little backup triple A or double A set and you switch that back and forth on the side. The idea is that you run on the big D cell set and then when it, when that runs out or you run it down then you can switch to the little uh, that side. How about that side? There's where the power is. You can switch the little set and it actually had a line out to run to a stereo and stuff. It had some interesting features. It's an okay radio. I got it cheap enough and it was fun to play with. Some of the digital radios have some interesting features. They have memories. Some of them have scanning up and down and some other features. Um, some of the older analog radios are quite good. Um, some of them are vacuum tube driven. And yes, you can still find a vacuum tube. Um, I have a number of older driven, uh, vacuum tube driven receivers. Um, one that comes to mind is the R390. Um, you probably won't find one, not for under a thousand dollars. If you do, it'll be a wreck. Uh, that was a military receiver, but an excellent piece of mechanical engineering. Its uh, its precision probably rivals a fine Swiss watch, and I'm not being facetious there. It is an excellent piece of mechanical engineering, but it is very dated. Um, you might be able to find a Helicrafter. I would try and find one of the bigger Helicrafters, uh, one of the bigger units. They have a few more features. Um, one of the things that's going to make your uh, shortwave listening quite a bit more pleasurable is uh, having a good speaker or a place for headphones. And you definitely want uh, what they call a BFO, or Beat Frequency Oscillator. It might also be labeled sideband. Um, I would kind of go out of my way to make sure that you have that feature. There are still a few places on the internet that cater to shortwave radio sales. Um, I'm not going to name any names. They're easy enough to find. Um, I believe there's one in, I want to say Kansas City, that I personally have dealt with a number of times and had very good luck with. There are also some really good tabletops, some more modern ones. Um, they're, uh, just to name a few names, no particular order, they're Yazoo and, and Kenwood and like it's a 10 tech um, but expect to pay a lot for those those are probably geared more toward the a serious amateur community um, like most things if you're going to get into this you know, one of two things will happen um, in my estimation this happens with any new hobby so you can use this uh, theory and uh, for what it's worth you get into a hobby and you go whole hog right away and you overbuy and then you lose interest and then you're stuck with a let's just say a thousand dollar radio that you're not going to get hardly anything with. Um, the other thing that happens is you get interested in the hobby and you're kind of on a very limited budget and you buy a cheap piece of crap and from there one of two things happen. You lose interest because it's a cheap piece of crap and it's hard to work with or you realize it's a cheap piece of crap and then you go rebuy another radio and spend more money so let's say you um, let's say you take the cheap route and you buy a fifty dollar radio and you're dissatisfied with it and then you go buy another radio that's a hundred fifty dollars well you in essence spent two hundred or two hundred dollars so I would really do a lot of research uh, find somebody to help you if you're unfamiliar with this and keep in mind that a uh, shortwave radio listening, like scanning, um, is only as good as the antenna. You really ought to put up a decent outside antenna, although it is very fun to use the, uh, you know, the little rod antennas that come with the thing uh, to try and listen to things. And uh, let me make sure you're in the picture there. The sun's coming up a little bit, so I want to move the camera a little bit. Um, and that could be quite... Um, 
quite fun and frustrating for your friends that are in the short wave listening community if you have, if you get a group of friends together. Um, I remember one year I erected a rather elaborate shortwave radio antenna and found it was very disappointing compared to my friends who were just using the, the expandable rod antennas. It really, to be really blunt, it really pissed me off. I spent a lot of time and a lot of money and the best thing that ever happened to the antenna was the wind knocked it down. I think the wind blew a branch down and knocked the thing down and I just took it down. And I probably reused the wire to make a crystal set or something. But it is fun to experiment with different antennas and different positions of antennas. Um, sometimes you can find some radio programs to listen to that are quite enjoyable to listen to. Uh, years ago, before it kind of fell on hard times, I used to listen to the BBC World Service religiously. And they had different frequencies and programs, and they replayed the series um, during the day and during the evening. And I actually had a radio. I don't know, this one probably does it. It had a timer on it and a tape deck, and I would record the stuff during the day while I was at work. I'd come home. It was I was time shifting the the programs, kind of like you use your DVR nowadays. Only it was more fun, and I had a substantial library of uh, cassette tapes built up that I used to share with friends and stuff. And actually, at the time, there was a number of us that listened to shortwave radio, and uh, we would. Uh, Basically, what would happen is if somebody missed a program, or you know, there's times you can't receive something. Um, we would trade the programs, and at the time, I actually had a, a really old Telex cassette duplicator, and I would duplicate tapes for guys, for you know, buy me a soda or something. Yeah, I was that into it. It was really fun. I've still got the tape duplicator. So, uh, those are some hopefully helpful hints. Uh, there are plenty of things to listen to. Um, I still like enjoy listening to shortwave radio, especially in the evening. Um, there are interesting programs. There are a lot of interesting editorials. There's a lot of religious programs, uh, if you're interested in those. Um, <laughs> that's not rain. That's just all water falling out of the trees from the wind blowing. funny. Um, there's a lot of good programming still. If you want to get a, a, a good view of how we fit into the world and what the world perceives our country as, in case you haven't figured out how I live in the United States, um, the shortwave radio can give a good perspective of how we interact with the world and how we're perceived. Um, I think of it, you know, we have television here and we have the world news. Well, it's the world news from our perspective. You want the world news, you got to listen to three or four other, um, other programs or stations, and uh, from different areas, and it's quite interesting. Um, I've been listening to shortwave radio long enough that uh, I used to listen to uh, radio, uh, propaganda radio from Russia and propaganda radio from China, and uh, that was always interesting. I think when I was a kid, I even sent away for uh, you could order, or they actually they gave it to me free. I think it was Mao's Little Red Book, you know, his, for lack of a better word, his propaganda or uh, um, kind of teachings there. And I think I, when I sent a letter to them, I can't remember if they wanted a payment or not. I don't think they did. I think they would give you one. It was kind of a paper one, and it was pretty thin. But uh, they returned the letter at first because I didn't address it properly. Because I just, I think I sent it to China. It's the, I think it, I don't remember. I believe it was the People's Republic of China. You know, there was a proper way of doing it, and uh, they weren't, they weren't going to have any of it, which I thought was funny at the time, considering it took two or three weeks to get my letter returned. I was very disappointed, and it. Like a lot of things, when you're told no, you makes you want it even more. I'm sure I'm in some database because I ordered the red book from China. <laughs> and it wasn't that great a book. I'm sure you can find it on the internet now.
Oh, I'm trying to think what else there is. There's a lot of interesting, uh, interesting, interesting programs. Like I said, I used to listen to the BBC World Service before they cut back, fell on hard times and cut back. With the internet, they um, don't use that so much anymore. And I believe it was kind of a way at the time to keep their empire together, and that's long since uh, vaporized. I don't think they have so many remote sites anymore. I'm not sure what, what part of the British Empire there is left, other than Britain proper. There might be some little islands and stuff. Um, for those of you that are familiar with that, if you'd like to correct me or put a comment, that'd be great. I'm not opposed to it. Um, I used to listen to a lot of radio plays. Some of them were quite funny. Some of them were just dry as dirt. Um, I bet I've listened to... I used to have a uh, rather substantial map and a... Uh, I think it was a three-ring notebook of all the places and times that I had listened to different things. Uh, it was quite thick, yeah, but it, it had accumulated over the years. And you can use the a, a good a good shortwave radio do you know the AM band and FM too. And interestingly enough, uh, shortwave radio for the AM band is quite sensitive, and uh, usually you can hear a lot of local radio a number of states away. Which is always fun. You know, you hear. I used to listen to some baseball games and stuff. That was always fun. Well, I think I've droned on a lot uh, enough about this, just off the cuff. Um, again, I would suggest that you find some help um, if you're seriously interested in listening to shortwave radio. Um, I'm sure somebody in your area would be more than happy to help. There are other enthusiasts and usually pretty excited to show you what they've done and what they've set up and what, what they can do. It's a kind of a passion like a lot of things in life where people have different passions or hobbies or manias depending on your perspective. Well, if you have a question or a comment, feel free to leave it. Um, other than that, I'm going to get the towel out and finish drying off my workbench. And find some things to do before the neighbors wake up. Have a great day. Take it easy.